Excellent, we reached the part where we're going to compare the new MacBook Pro from 2019 against the upgraded uh, old one, which I have shown you step by step in my other tutorials where I upgraded the memory. So now the old MacBook Pro has more memory and a bigger SSD than the new one, but that doesn't have to mean, or I can rather say the new MacBook Pro may still be nicer to work with. Obviously, if you are on a budget and you already have an old MacBook Pro, uh, upgrading can be interesting for you. But uh, if you're brand new, then buying a used MacBook Pro on eBay, I'm maybe not such so much a fan of. Uh, I probably would gravitate towards the new one. But that's what we're gonna check out. We're gonna compare both the old one against the new one. So why don't we just get rolling with the unboxing of the brand new MacBook Pro from 2019 in the stock base config and then do the performance comparison. So that's very exciting. Uh, my first MacBook Pro in quite some time. Like I told you, this is the space gray with the basic stock configuration. So I didn't upgrade the SSD storage or the memory. So I really have a base config comparison. So let's have a peek inside. And like always, uh, Apple has this uh, unique way of packaging the product, uh, something which a lot of other companies seem to copy. I think I read a story once, a biography about Steve Jobs uh, and something comes to mind that uh, Steve Jobs was obsessed with details. Maybe he got it from typography. In any case, I think they had some designer locked somewhere in a room and he had to figure out the perfect way to create the perfect packaging or the perfect design, something like this. So I think this is the result of that. So far, I think it's uh, definitely thinner than the old one. That's to be expected. Expected. I'm always a little bit uh, skeptical about it. On the one hand, I like it if the MacBooks are thin. On the other hand, I know thermally it may be better if they would have a little bit more thickness to it. So then that way you have a bigger cooling element in here. But as long as you don't have too demanding tasks, that should be fine. So let me take quickly take this out of the wrap and show you a few close-up shots. And guys, so what I'm gonna do first is um, measure the boot up time, show you for close-up shots. Um, as you remember previously, I upgraded the old MacBook Pro and I measured the boot up time. I can overlay a picture right here. So there you see the old boot up time was about, uh, I guess 17, 18 seconds after the upgrade. And now I wanna know how, how much, uh, Time does it take to boot up the old one and that's exactly why i'm going to repeat the same test that i did before with the upgraded old macbook pro from 2011 versus the new one so i just pushed start and i'm letting run the stopwatch and uh yeah obviously both uh, should be reasonably fast as long as you don't have an old hard disk drive the boot up time usually works pretty well so let's see how long it takes and it appears to be finished at about mm, let's say 20 seconds so almost the same, I think uh, uh, surprisingly though, the old MacBook Pro that I upgraded was a few seconds faster. So that's kind of interesting, but my guess is this could also be simply due to that this MacBook Pro runs uh, macOS Mojave and the upgraded one, I think runs High Sierra if I'm not mistaken. So that, that would be one operating system before this one. So let's quickly log in and uh, next up we're gonna do the Geekbench test because obviously I also want to see what's the difference uh, performance rise when you run a benchmark. So let me zoom in for a little bit here. That should be fine. I hope you see everything just right. So I'm gonna open up Geekbench. I'm gonna test both Geekbench 4 and uh, just recently, as you can see here, Geekbench 5 got released as well. So maybe run both benchmarks and then upload them. Guys, uh, I had to do a quick uh, update of the Geekbench 5. There was already an update. But for testing, uh, because the most tests that I did in the past, I did with Geekbench 4 and I'm just gonna run the CPU benchmark and then upload it uh, so that you can see the direct comparison between the old MacBook Pro and the new MacBook Pro uh, from a CPU perspective. Because the CPU is the only thing that I didn't upgrade, obviously with the old MacBook Pro. So let's see how this uh, turns out. Very interesting to see the difference between the old MacBook Pro and the new one. So I'm just going to hit upload and upload this to my profile. And then you can see a detailed co uh, performance comparison. I put the link to my Geekbench profile below. Um, all these results should be publicly viewable. And uh, as you can see, the old MacBook Pro from late 2011 that I upgraded to the memory and the SSD and also did the fresh install the single core score is about 3000 and the multi-core uh, the, the multi score 
that's where the old MacBook Pro obviously lacks. Because as you can see, the old MacBook Pro has only two cores, but the new one that I got has four cores. So in total, I mean, you have uh, a signif significantly higher multi-core performance and that can be very beneficial if you have some heavier workloads or maybe you want to export a video file or something like this. What I also can do is in fact test the graphics card as well. That'd be very interesting to see. So why don't I just run the test for the graphics card, the built-in graphics card of this Mac Pro as well and see what the results we get there. Now I did that as well. Um, I'm gonna upload this uh, to, to my Geekbench uh, results uh, collection. <laughs> Obviously I have tested this once before. So you can uh, select by Geekbench version. And if you want, instead of seeing the CPU results, you can just click to compute. And here you see the test that I did with the 13 inch mid 2019 MacBook Pro. And you see here the performance is, uh, if you compare that for example to my Mac Pro, which obviously is not from mid 2012, I have a Mac Pro 5.1, this uh, big tower Mac and I upgraded the graphics card. I can show this to you here. Uh, that's the system that I'm using for video editing primarily. And uh, because it has the PCI slots, you can just swap out the graphics card and obviously that's a far superior performance so i'm gonna do all these tests as well for geekbench 5 which was just released recently and then you can compare uh, these different systems in case you have maybe an imac or some other system you at least get some ballpark numbers where your system is in this kind of score and you can also scroll down and see this was the performance of my old Mac Pro early on. I tested it with different graphics cards and different CPUs, so that might be actually interesting to see. And lastly, let's also test the read and write speed of the drive with the classical Blackmagic disk speed test. If you don't know the Blackmagic disk speed test, oh, I hit start already. Uh, comes from video editing. You can see there's the different types of video resolutions. So I let this run through and then we're gonna compare it against the uh, speed from the old upgrade that I did, the 2011 MacBook Pro. It's very easy to swap out the SSDs. With the new MacBook Pros, I think it's very hard to swap out the SSDs, if not impossible. And uh, the one major downside that I don't like about this uh, new MacBook Pro is obviously the uh, write speed is about the same as when you upgrade an old one, but the read speed is obviously faster. However, the major downside is if I go here to the system preferences, I am personally very disappointed with the little bit of the storage. They just give you 128 gigabytes of storage in the base configuration. That's really uh, very disappointing. I would have really hoped Apple at least bumps it up to double that or maybe even 500. I mean, a uh, uh, SSD like that, an aftermarket one. I mean, uh, I only know the prices in Germany. I don't know what that's in the US, but it should be about, let's say $70 or something. A terabyte you sometimes get for around $100, a little bit more maybe. Uh, prices are obviously always changing. But the point is, these solid state disk drives, they have really come down in price and uh, Apple doesn't pass that on to the consumer. Instead, I really feel in business administration, they, uh, or in economics, we have this curve, the price. I mean, I don't wanna go too deep into business administration. Basically, putting in less memory, it gives them an option to uh, capture more of the willingness to pay. So I think this is really optimized for making more money off the consumer. So that's a little bit sad to see, but hey, um, for what it's worth, otherwise the build quality is very nice. Guys, this concludes my first initial impression of this MacBook Pro. So the old upgraded one, yeah, it's not as fast, but it's still also good in my opinion. So uh, what I like about the new one is it has like this really nice big uh, touchpad here. The keyboard, obviously that's slightly different. So if you're someone who writes a lot, I would test that maybe before, or maybe you get an external keyboard because the keys are really different. It's not what I'm used to. And then also kind of interesting to see is this touch bar. Uh, it Maybe it takes a little bit more used to, and I think this is always an extra step. When you had these physical keys, you could do it directly, but here you have to do it a little bit manually if you want to change something. You have to do two steps instead of one. So you see, you tap it once and you change the, tap it once, change the volume, tap it twice and you're out. So you have 
three, three taps, right? One, changing something, three, or, or at least two. So that's a little bit uh, different. And then this changes according to what application you have open. So if I quickly switch over to iTunes, obviously you have some iTunes symbols right there. And uh, what's actually kind of useful is this touch ID right here. It uh, You can train the finger sensor. And then let's say you locked your screen, you can just uh, push uh, with a button and unlock the screen just by tapping it with your finger. And the same also applies if you uh, want to enter a password on some website or make a purchase, I think, then you can confirm it with this touch ID function. So that's actually kind of useful, but uh, also like a gimmick, I mean, uh, stuff would work before as well, even though it didn't have all these extra features. So guys, uh, up next is uh, obviously the summary and conclusion, but I just want to uh, remind you that I will also upgrade the operating system to macOS Catalina. And for this, I just got a USB flash drive and I'm going to put the macOS Catalina installer onto the USB flash drive and show you how to do a fresh clean install just right from that stick. And maybe after doing the Catalina install, I run the uh, performance benchmarks also under Catalina. Maybe the operating system makes some differences. I read that Apple uh, made some changes under the hood in the operating system that also could potentially improve the performance. And what I also tested, uh, that it worked really well to connect an external monitor via these uh, Thunderbolt slash USB-C type connectors. Right now I just connected it uh, to the power supply, but that's also really cool if you have a big, let's say, LG screen with a Thunderbolt 3 connector, you just plug this in and the, you use the external monitor and the uh, MacBook Pro gets charged at the same time. So that's also nice. But right now let's jump to the summary and conclusion. Yeah, terrific. We jumped to part four, the summary and conclusion. And uh, so far in this video series, I have compared the old upgraded MacBook Pro against a brand new one from 2019 in the stock configuration. And we really have uh, run uh, quite a few of benchmarks and comparisons. So right now you have the perfect com uh, understanding of what to consider when picking a MacBook Pro. And first up, I upgraded the memory. Second up, I showed you how in the old Mac Pro, how easy it actually is to do these upgrades. I especially like that you can put in really affordable these SSD drives and yeah, I mean, uh, taking a step back, the interesting thing about it is right now that the old MacBook Pro from 2011, easily upgradable, has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of storage. And of course, you could also have used a terabyte drive easily if you have a lot of files. While the new Mac Pro, obviously, it has the touch bar, it has the Thunderbolt uh, connectors and a faster CPU. But unfortunately, what it doesn't have is cheap storage because, yes, the storage has a faster read speed, but the write speed was uh, somewhat similar. And also, uh, to my disappointment, uh, you only get 128 gigabytes. So I really hope Apple bumps this up a little bit, passes on some of the cost reduction in the SSDs onto the consumer. That's really what I would hope for. But uh, most importantly, next up, I'm also going to show you how to create a bootable USB uh, flash uh, slash thumb drive with the macOS Catalina installer. And then we're going to install macOS Catalina on this MacBook Pro. And you can use the same technique uh, of creating bootable USB installers uh, for all sorts of operating systems, also Mojave and the other versions do in fact work equally well. So I'm very excited to try the new operating system and you're invited to head over to my channel page right here. Let me show this to you. And there I have a playlist that's called computers. Uh, audio equipment, video equipment, and a bunch of other things that you can check out. Maybe uh, since we did all these Geekbench tests, Geekbench 4 CPU, Geekbench 4 graphics card, um, you might also want to compare my Mac Pro upgrade tutorial, where if you don't know that yet, where I upgraded the MacBook Pro from 2009 to a video editing rig. Uh, that's very interesting to see to that process. Uh, that's also what I did and people enjoyed this a lot. Guys, a lot of people have already subscribed to my channel because of the useful content that I provide for you here. You can do the same as well right now. I see you in the next video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and uh, all the best to you. Have fun with your new gear or have fun with your upgraded gear. Take care. And up next, I'm going to install macOS Catalina onto the brand new MacBook Pro from 2019 with the help of a USB install stick. 
and you can find this in tutorial number five. Uh, I'm gonna link this to you here in the up next section. Guys, awesome for tuning in. A lot of people have already subscribed because of the useful content that I provide here. You can subscribe right now as well. I see you in the next video. Take care.